Welcome to this 10 minute lightning talk, leveraging graph algorithms and visualization, visualizations with NeoViz JavaScript. Presented by William Lyon. Take it away, Will. Thanks, Elaine. Uh, hi folks, thanks everyone for coming to Nodes today. Hope you're enjoying it so far. Uh, so my name's Will. Uh, the slides for this talk are available, bit.ly slash neovizalgos. And my uh, Twitter and, and web URL are on there as well. So feel free to, to ping me if you have any questions. Um, so I work on the Neo4j Labs team uh, as a developer. Uh, if you saw the keynote earlier today, uh, Michael talked about Neo4j Labs. These are, are sort of uh, tooling extensions around the database. And that's exactly what I want to talk about today in the context of combining graph visualization and graph algorithms. So here we have a graph visualization. This is Game of Thrones data. You may have seen uh, some of this before. What I want to do is, is sort of dissect what's going on in this visualization. So if we take a look at this, we can see we have uh, some nodes are larger than the others. And in this case, the node size is relative to a centrality uh, metric, in this case, page rank. Uh, we have different colors in the graph. Uh, nodes are colored by community, uh, which is the result of running, uh, in this case, the label propagation uh, algorithm, which is a community detection algorithm. And then our relationship thickness are styled relative to uh, a relationship property or a weight on the relationship, which uh, in this case, we're visualizing interactions among uh, characters in Game of Thrones. So if uh, two characters have had more interactions, we increase the thickness of that relationship. So that's really neat because we can just look at this visualization and we can immediately start to uh, infer some information and some understanding. Just at a glance, we can start to see who are the most important characters uh, who are they sort of segmented in? Who are they interacting with uh, the most? And we can start to see, even if we haven't read the Game of Thrones books, we can start to kind of understand uh, what's going on in this world, which I think is really neat. So I wanna talk about how we can build visualizations like these using graph algorithms. Uh, so if you're not familiar with graph algorithms, there's a great book that my, my colleagues, Mark and Amy, uh, have just written. There's a, a free download at neoprj.com slash graph dash algorithms dash book. Basically, graph algorithms are broken up into five different areas, uh, things from pathfinding to centrality, finding communities, uh, predicting where relationships will be created in the graph um, and how similar they are. And in Neo4j, there are implementations uh, of lots of different algorithms. This is uh, as of April, I'm sure it's changed and I'm sure we have more since then. So this is a really uh, fun, evolving area. And if you're familiar with Neo4j, you'll know that there are these things called procedures. So with Neo4j, we use the Cypher query language. Uh, Cypher has procedures which allow us to execute sort of custom code. Uh, so in this case, the algorithms package is a plugin that uh, adds functionality to Cypher. And the way this works typically is we say uh, call algo dot name of the algorithm, and then we pass in the label and relationship type that we want to run the algorithm on. We can also project a graph, so we can run algorithms on a subgraph or even uh, some graph that we're projecting that doesn't actually exist in the data. This is a really, really, really powerful feature. Um, let's look at an example from the Russian Twitter trolls uh, project. So I also run what we call the Neo4j Data Journalism Accelerator Program. And in this program, we work with data journalists to try to make sense of data for stories using Neo4j. Uh, and for this, this project, we worked with uh, some folks at NBC News that got a hold of some, uh, some leaked Twitter data, and we analyzed it in Neo4j. So when we're talking about this idea of a graph projection, we're talking often about inferred relationships. So here we have a user posted a tweet that was a retweet uh, of a tweet posted by another user. And what that means is that there's this inferred relationship uh, from one user to the other. If you retweet a tweet posted by another user, you're sort of amplifying the message of that other user. So that's this 
inferred graph that in this case, uh, what we're gonna be working with. So this is sort of an inferred retweet or, or amplified graph from the Russian troll network. And what I wanna show is how we built this graph visualization, uh, which was helpful for NBC News to make sense of this data. If you look at it, you can see distinct uh, communities. You can see some nodes are bigger than others. Uh, and that really helped the folks at NBC make sense of this so they could, could write some stories uh, to sort of tell us what was going on in this data set. NBC News released this data set uh, publicly and we've made it available to anyone in Neo4j Sandbox, which you can, can go to neo4jsandbox.com. There are a bunch of different use cases in there. Look for the Russian Twitter trolls, spin it up, and you'll see uh, something like this. So this is Neo4j browser uh, with a browser guide for Sandbox. So the, the data is already loaded. Uh, the Sandbox comes with a bunch of guides uh, that have queries, uh, images embedded in them. What was fun here is we, we sort of walk through some of the queries that we used with the NBC News team uh, to make sense of this data set. But what I wanna do is just sort of skip to the graph algorithm section. So what I'm gonna do here is run PageRank on this inferred retweet graph. And then I'm gonna say, uh, okay, who are the users with the highest PageRank score? And I get back this table. It says, okay, uh, 10 GOP uh, has a, the top page rank, and I see a list of others. Okay, that's nice. Uh, we can do community detection. Again, also with this the same sort of syntax passing in the cipher query for that inferred graph. And then I can say, okay, let's find those communities and, and who's in them. And I can see, okay, I, I have some users here. I have some users here in this tabular view, but th that doesn't really help me make sense of what's going on in the data. And for that, I need a graph visualization. So there's this library uh, called NeoVizJS. Uh, it's available on NPM. This is a JavaScript library. And the goal of this library is to make it really easy to connect to Neo4j uh, from uh, a web application without having to write much Cypher, pull data in, and style a graph visualization using uh, graph algorithms. So let's look at an example. So here's a visualization of that retweet network um, without using algorithms in our visualization. And basically in NeoViz, all we do is define some configuration. So in our, our HTML somewhere, we have a, a div uh, with the idea of viz. That's where we want to inject our visualization. We pass in our connection credentials. In this case, this is for the, the sandbox instance I created. Then we specify the labels that we want to visualize. We specify the relationship types that we want to visualize. Um, and then if we want a caption. So I'm saying here, I want to use the uh, screen name property for the caption of the nodes, uh, but I don't want a caption for the relationships. I could maybe add the caption as a relationship type or relationship property, but uh, I'm not interested in that in this case. Uh, here I specif specify the initial cipher query. So with NeoViz, you, you typically only wanna visualize um, some part of the graph, not necessarily the whole data set. So we define some initial cipher query and we can, uh, we can adjust this later on and, and render updates to our visualization. But initially we're just looking for this, uh, this retweet or amplified graph. Okay, now we're just changing the configuration to add relationship thickness in. So, on these amplified relationships, we've stored a count property, uh, which is basically the number of times that one user retweeted another. So now we start to see some relationships are, are thicker than others. And one thing that's nice of this is because we're using this force directed layout, which is common in graph visualizations, we can start to see where uh, clusters form in the graph just as a result of this force directed layout. Uh, so that's nice. But we also have uh, page rank and uh, the results of label propagation that we just ran uh, previously in Sandbox that we can use to style the visualization. Now, when we do that, we get a lot more information here. So we're saying style the size of the node relative to the page rank property and style the color. Uh, group the coloring by the community property. So all of these nodes that are red, they belong to the same community as identified by our label propagation algorithm. And the yellow ones, those belong also to a, a different community. And 
really quickly here, we can look at this, we can see, oh, well, this, this 10 GOP account, that seems pretty important. Um, let's, let's take a look at that. And we can start to, to sort of also see groups uh, of these trolls that are, that are retweeting uh, each other frequently. And what was going on here when we started looking at the hashtags that they're using, uh, we found that this red group was very focused on sort of right-wing political hashtags, the yellow group focused on the more uh, sort of left-leaning, but not necessarily in a positive light. And these uh, purple ones were focused on Black Lives Matters hashtag. So we could quickly start to see what sort of content different groups of these trolls uh, were promoting. And what was really exciting and, and interesting, NBC News published this article, um, they released the data set, and then the following day, uh, you may remember this, the, the Mueller uh, indictment for the Russian uh, troll farm came out and it specifically mentioned uh, a few accounts, one of which was this uh, Tennessee GOP. So that this was a, an account that was uh, intended to look like it represented the GOP party account of Tennessee, but really it was, it was a Russian troll. So just by doing this sort of data analysis, uh, we can quickly see in this visualization that yes, this is an important uh, account and we can uh, verify that because it was one of, uh, I think only two specifically mentioned in the Mueller indictment. Um, so pretty cool. So in this case, we were writing a uh, cipher uh, to do our graph algorithms. You don't actually need to write any uh, Cypher to run graph algorithms. There's a graph app called Neuler or the Graph Algorithms Playground uh, that you can install in Neo4j Desktop. Uh, it has a nice sort of query builder UI for running algorithms and it embeds NeoViz uh, directly to visualize the results of these algorithms, uh, which you can get at install.graphapp.io. Um, cool. So in this talk, we, we talked pretty briefly about this NeoViz library. Um, there's lots of interesting use cases, but the main goal is to be able to embed visualizations in your applications, uh, talking directly to Neo4j. Um, we've recently uh, done some more work, lots, um, lots of work from the, the community that have uh, recently taken over some updates to NeoViz. So uh, we'll start to see uh, some features added there. So thanks, I uh, just wanna give, out, give a shout out uh, to the folks uh, contributing to NeoViz there, that's, that's super helpful. Cool, so I'm, I'm a bit over time, but I, I think we'll be okay. So this is the Hunger Games section uh, where we have a few questions for you to answer. Uh, so the first question, uh, true or false, results of graph algorithms can be used in graph visualizations. Uh, what is the command to install NeoViz and which of the following algorithms are used to find communities in the graph? Cool, so I'll leave that up on the screen um, for a few minutes so you can get those answers in. Um, and if we have time, I don't know, Elaine, maybe could we take some questions if we have time? Let's see if we have any questions in the chat here. Thanks, Martin, for coming to two Will Talks today. That's great, appreciate that. Cool, so I don't really see any questions. I'm just gonna switch back to the, the Hunger Games uh, slide here so that we can get those answers in while we wait for the next Lightning Talk to start. So thanks everyone for coming. If you're interested in, um, in doing these Hunger Games later on, you might want to take a screenshot. I found that might be helpful, uh, so you can refer to those later on.
Cool, thanks, Michael. Uh, so question from Barry here. Can the install be made on the new database as a service? Yeah, so in the keynote today, uh, Emil talked about the new NFT database as a service, and yep, uh, you can you can use this. Um, NeoViz just uses the JavaScript driver for Neo4j. So instead of uh, using this Bolt uh, endpoint for a sandbox instance with uh, Neo4j database as a service, you're given one specific for your instance. So you just plug that in and it uh, connects uh, using the JavaScript driver. Can you hear me, Will? Yes. Oh, okay. For some reason, I couldn't get audio for a while. I apologize. Hear you um, so did you catch all the questions? Did you answer everything in the chat? Yeah, I, uh, I, I think uh, so. Okay. Yeah. okay, great. All right, well, thank you very much, Will, for your presentation. We appreciate it. Yeah, thanks, everyone. Bye, everybody. Cheers. Bye.